Welcome to Fantastic Plastic, a series of SolidWorks video tutorials presented by the Demonic Group. In Fantastic Plastic, I'll be presenting strategies and techniques for injection molded plastic part design using SolidWorks CAD software. I'm Andrew Lowe. I'm a senior industrial designer with the Demonic Group. The Demonic Group is a full-service product development consultancy located just outside Chicago, Illinois. In this installment of Fantastic Plastic, we'll take a look at ways we can speed up the modeling of undercut geometry, like in the example shown here. So here we see three examples of kind of common undercut geometry. Uh, in this example, this rib here, this long one, would have gotten way too thick at the root here and would have caused some sink on the cosmetic face. So we uh, a lifter was incorporated here, this kind of undercut geometry, the lifter moving this way. And this allows us to have a much thinner or, or wall, rib here and we eliminate that thick rib at the the cosmetic side of the part and we don't see that uh, sink on the outside part uh, likewise this is another kind of common feature i've seen uh, i've heard it referred to as a doghouse before i don't believe that's a technical term uh, but this is a kind of geometry where uh, this screw boss because of the uh, design guide on the insert that had to go on it was very very thick way thicker than the nominal wall of the part and definitely would have caused sink on the cosmetic face uh, so to prevent that, the uh, geometry was placed kind of on this uh, raised portion here, and then the lifter moves in this direction, and then all the sink would be on this kind of area of the part that was hidden. And also sometimes you'll see functional kind of undercut geometry, and here this is a little uh, opening for a snap tab that comes in, just a little window that the snap kind of engages with, and the only way of getting this uh, out of the part was with the lifter. So a quick way of modeling those two examples previously shown is with the uh, the shell tool. So let's take a look at uh, this detail here, the screw flange. So we're going to roll up the model. And this is another instance where the multi-body modeling kind of comes in handy. And I'm going to create a sketch that has uh, this geometry. I'm not using a pattern here. I want to explicitly define how this uh, these little uh, flanges are located on the part. So I just have a sketch here and I'm extruding up to body. Really powerful end condition in our extrude feature. And now if we hide this, we kind of have these three shapes here. And the reason I did this is with the shell tool, I can quickly remove the faces I don't need in the model. So I get rid of all of these faces. And this just speeds up the modeling instead of having to create you know, this feature and then create a series of ribs or thin feature extrudes to create these or set up a series of planes to model all three of these because they all kind of have different directions on them. I just have the one feature here that drives them from a single sketch and then the shell tool. I did need to use three different shells because you can only shell one body at a time. And I came in and just added some additional cuts. Uh, one good practice to get into is kind of helping eliminate zero thickness errors. And I did that by using the move face to kind of move this up to body face. It was generated by that up to body condition. I just moved it out a little bit so that way it pierced into the main wall of the part. You know, if we, we zoom in here, we can see that it's definitely piercing in. And this just kind of helps when it comes to actually adding all the geometry together. I used the combine, and then I did need three different uh, draft features to model the draft uh, of the inside of this that's being formed by the lifter. So three different draft features, but greatly sped up the process. So to recap, the uh, the multi-body modeling combined with the uh, the shell tool can greatly speed up things because it simplifies the number of features that you need, the number of sketches and planes and such. Just some something to think about, you know, a little bit outside of the box modeling can uh, definitely speed things up. I hope you enjoyed this week's SolidWorks video tutorial presented by the Demonic Group. Please subscribe to the Demonic Group on YouTube by clicking our logo on the bottom right of the screen to stay up to date on new video releases. As well, click the SolidWorks icon to be taken to our website where you can download the example SolidWorks files used in this week's video. And finally, check out other great content by the Demonic Group. Will it fill it? And surfaces and splines by clicking the video links on the left of the screen.